In today's video, you know who has a bad metabolism? Dead people. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today we got my man Steve Bogrand, Science with Steve. And uh, I got a question that came from my Instagram direct message and before you ask, yes, I'm doing a video in the garage for the first time in a long time, but I smashed my ring light so this is what we're left with. But the good news is the birds are gone. No one's out here right now. I probably just jinxed it. But let's get into the day's video. Today's question is a good one and I'll put it on the screen here for you guys and I'll also put Steven's Instagram so you can ask questions to Steven and I'll link his YouTube channel below. What was your last video on YouTube? Oh, how to warm up. How to warm up yeah. properly. Yeah. These are good things from an exercise up. scientist. Yeah. He's part bro, part smart. So today's question was from my Instagram and it basically says what can be expected as far as metabolic adaptations or how much is our metabolism going to slow down right. during a fat loss diet and we've got a lot of thoughts on this. In fact, Stephen and I were poring over like some PubMed articles. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to give you guys a specific number. So let's dig into it, Stephen. What can we expect to happen during a, in, in, the, in his words, a contest prep diet or a, a harsh fat loss diet? Harsh fat loss diet, contest prep diet. Well, I'd say it's kind of one and the same, right? Very right. similar. Um, <clears throat> so what we're typically going to see is that where there's going to be a, a decrease in the, the basal metabolic rate of your RMR, whatever it might be, right? Explain, a, explain basal versus RMR. <laughs> one is much, much more controlled, essentially. Yeah. Um, so one, they're keeping you in a room, all this other stuff. The other one, they're just kind of saying, okay, put on this mask, breathe into it. We're going to measure O2 and CO2, and we're going to do some really smart people calculations where the computer's going to, and we're going to base it off that. Yeah. That's really what you're going to be doing. Um, so if you're getting your metabolic rate tested, you're really doing an RMR, okay? Uh, but... You know, we've actually done a few of these. I've been in a couple of studies where they've tested mine, you know, pre and post contest. You've been in some, right? Yeah, I just did one last year. Yeah, for uh, what, James Longstrom? Yep, out of USF. So yeah, another that, smart I think that data is coming out now. If you follow Bill yeah. Campbell um, or James Longstrom on Instagram, they've been posting that data. Yeah, but um, at the end, one of the big things we were looking at was a model, a model of fat loss, metabolism change during a dieting period, post dieting period. And uh, to be honest with you, there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot that goes into that. Um, and so it's extremely complex. They're looking at things like your carbohydrate intake, your uh, respiratory quotient, right? So essentially what that does is it tells us are we burning mostly carbs, mostly fats, fat intakes, proteins, um, how our body uses them, um, how our body is making proteins into carbs and all this other kind of crazy stuff. And to even try to go into it would be way, way too much. Um, but we do know that after long periods of dieting, where your metabolism adjusts, it goes down, right? Our bodies are made to survive. That's what they're good at. Which is why we started the video with saying, you know, who has a bad metabolism is dead people because- Yeah, absolutely. If you're still alive, you have a good metabolism. Yes. It's, it's working. It's working. And so what we see is like, we become more efficient. And so we think of efficiency as a good thing, right? Like it's good to be efficient. It's good to get stuff done in a timely manner. Uh, but when it comes to metabolism and fat loss, efficiency probably isn't your best friend. We want to be super inefficient. We want to waste calories. We want to throw them all willy nilly. We want to make it rain with them, right? It's like a 69 Camaro that gets eight miles to the gallon. It's inefficient, right? but it's badass. Exactly. And that's what we want to be. So the more that we do cardio, the better we get at cardio, right? Simple things like our stride, how much excess energy. Like if you're a bad swimmer, you're all over the place, right? It takes a ton of energy to stay afloat. If you're a good swimmer, it's going easy. It's nice. It's smooth. Efficient. Right. Our body does the same thing with the calorie usage. So what we want to know that that's going to happen. And the same thing is we can get it to become inefficient again, but it takes time. So I think the takeaway is like, it's hard to give somebody a, a number. I was, I was looking yes. to say like, here's a calculation. Right. Here's here. Hey friend, here's what we can expect to happen. So we can give you some estimates based on things that have happened to us. Right. So I usually start a prep diet around 300 to 350 grams of carbs around 70, 80 fat and 250 protein. Yep. I usually end around 150 to 200 carbs a day, 40 to 50 fat a day. So there is a calorie restriction. I also end with a lot more cardio, yep. but during that time, I also use things like refeeds and diet breaks, which we now know can help manipulate the metabolic rate and keep right. it a little bit higher, keep Absolutely. our lean body mass higher. Right. 
the most important thing that that I try to get through to my clients or to people that are, it's don't get an emotional attachment to your metabolic rate. Yeah. Don't get an emotional attachment to the fact that you have to reduce calories or you have to add cardio or you have to keep making changes. As long as you're making progress and you're feeling good and sleep yeah. is good and your recovery is good, then don't get attached to numbers because we're yeah. all going to have a different experience. Yeah. And I think that that really, it just goes so far because when we get attached to numbers, numbers are there to be objective. When we start being subjective with our feelings on them, we get ourselves into a world of trouble, right? Because again, stress, our psychological attachment to the process, yeah. to the things that are happening, it affects it. So we wanna make sure, like, especially one of the things I tell my clients, you guys pay me, you have me here to worry about that stuff for you. I don't want you to worry about right. it. Um, so the better that we can do in letting objective things like numbers be objective, the better we're gonna be in the process, right? Paul's numbers, probably not too far off of mine. I'm normally 200, 200 in protein. Uh, when I'm starting a contest prep, I probably go down to about, you know, 380, 400 carbs and probably around 70, 80 fats myself as well. But again, I like to use cardio more. Low food bothers me. Cardio doesn't bother me as much, right? Personal preferences. But where I end my contest prep diets is I've ended some at, what, 60 carbs a day, I yeah. think was my worst one with you. Um, and then... <laughs> this guy but not emotionally attached like right. if we have a goal you know for competitors we have a goal of getting on stage looking a certain way absolutely no one when you get on stage asks you like hey man were you able to eat 300 400 grams of carbs yesterday no one cares <laughs> no that does not benefit the competitor in any way it might benefit yeah. the ego of saying that you're able to eat more food but ultimately yeah. it just matters what gets on stage now if you're talking about a harsh fat loss diet there might be some other ramifications there absolutely for longevity uh, and able to keep up and maintain that fat loss approach but that's yeah. another thing that we use when we talk about diet breaks and refeeds is that yeah. taking a non-linear approach to fat loss meaning you don't just lose fat the entire time right. you use periods of maintenance yeah. I mean the diet break research that's been coming out has been pretty remarkable oh yeah absolutely so there, there's more than one way to get there and in fact I think there are actually better ways to get there and that's yeah. kind of what we do with our clients is we're paying attention to these these variables so we can't give you a hard number just understand that a the metabolism is going to adapt B that is a good thing you want your metabolism to adapt that means you're alive yep and don't get emotionally attached to those changes um, I think sometimes we get in a rush with fat absolutely. loss absolutely and that's that's the hardest part and with contest preps sometimes you, you have a hard date like if we're looking at nationals or pro shows like yeah. we can't just push those kinds of things back a, a normal a regional show a qualifier we can push those back right yep. um, so there's kind of a timeline there but if we're just trying to lose body fat and we're trying to do it in as healthy of a way as possible we're trying to set ourselves up for long-term success remember it's yep. long term we don't need to have a short term end date on something that's long term yeah so your resting metabolic rate might go down by 500 calories it might go down by a thousand calories but as long as you're making progress and you're reaching your goals understand that that's individual to you don't get attached to it and as long as you're feeling good you can keep going i guess that's going to be it for today that's it for today all right guys if you have any questions let us know below we'll talk to you tomorrow